I'd like to recognize Ms. Janine Langford, an investor in the Mott Family Investors and an indirect investor in Mr. Madoff's fund. Ms. Langford. Uh, Chairman Kanderski, Ranking Member Garrett, and members of the committee, thank you for holding these hearings and looking into the SEC's complicity with Bernard Madoff Investments. My name is Ginny Langford, and I live in San Rafael, California, as one of the more than 16,000 victims of the Madoff Ponzi scheme. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to present how financially devastating the scandal was to me personally. It shattered my trust in my government's ability to serve and protect us. My hope is that Congress will choose to recognize and protect all indirect investors, such as myself, who were victimized by this scandal. I have worked for 30 years as an art and design professional in the stationery and craft industry. The past 17 years have been as a single parent working to provide for myself and my daughter. In the areas where I have little expertise, I recognize the necessity to hire a specialist. Personal investment was one of those areas, and I knew that there were systems such as the SEC in place to protect me. From my research, there was no reason to believe that this investment was not a viable place to put my life savings. I had no way of knowing the par partnership where I placed my money was invested with Madoff. The money I had invested with Madoff represented my life savings. It was my retirement, a down payment for a house, investment for the business I was starting, and it was my daughter's education. In short, it was the foundation for my future. I do not have another 30 years to earn this money again. If the SEC had done its job, I would have my savings, and I would not be looking at working the rest of my life just to get by. I was shocked to find out uh, my money was gone, and I was outraged to find out that the very governing body that sanctioned this business did not protect me. I need help in understanding how the SEC could ignore expert testimony, be lax in its investigations, be influenced by the aura made off, and not carry out its duties. I find it tragic and ironic that the interpretation of the language by the SIPC leaves out the indirect hardworking people like myself who are not wealthy and who are now struggling to keep up because their lifetime of hard-earned savings or their pension has been stolen. These are the very investors for whom the SIPC insurance protection is most important. Congress needs to take action to restore confidence for all future investors. I understand an update to the definition of the word customer in the SIPA to include indirect investors would ensure that the SIPC symbol protects both indirect and direct investors in the financial markets and would begin to restore a sense of trust. If nothing has changed, the current situation would be similar to having a catastrophic landslide and the government came in to assist those on the on one side of the street, but not the other. I cannot believe this is the intent of this committee or of Congress. Though I appreciate extending the SIPC coverage through the Moffey Ellison Amendment to investors in IRSA plans, this does not go far enough. All of us who invested through family partnerships, trusts, hedge funds, feeder funds, and pension plans are victims of this crime. All of us who invested are also victims of the SEC's inability to find the fraud. We are all victims of the same crime, and we all need to be granted equal protection. The SEC's website reads, the mission of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission 
is to protect investors, maintain fair, orderly, and efficient markets, and facilitate capital formation. I urge you to rectify this current disparity of protection by carrying out the mission you set forth. 